Richmond, City Commissioner Jason Morgan remarks that he's seen a connection with certain businesses in the Richmond area. After filing an open records request with the city, there does seem to be some legitimacy to his claims. What he says is that there's five local hotels and motels where there's a large amount of crime and overdose calls that are coming to them. To continue with our Investigating Hotel series, we came to the Madison County Health Department to talk to senior health environmentalist Woody Arvin. Woody actually dispelled some myths for us about what it takes to actually shut a place down and recent complaints that were filed. Uh, we got a very, very wide range of, of different programs we work with, uh, anywhere from food service, establishments, hotels, motels, mobile home parks, schools, on-site sewage. We have rabies programs. I mean, we have just a a lot of anything to do with environmental health uh, in Madison County in Kentucky. If we have a hotel motel complaint, you know, we would just do the investigation. And we try to do our complaint investigations as quickly as possible. And again, it depends on the nature of the complaint, you know, how serious it could be. You know, if somebody says there's the floors are dirty in a restaurant, we wouldn't go out maybe as quickly on that as we would if there was raw sewage coming up in the restaurant. Do you all ever have very serious complaints with the hotels in the area? We get we get complaints. It's it's basically uh, we get a lot of complaints. People complain. You know that's you know the nature of people that you know if they see a bug they automatically think it's a bed bug or uh, something of that nature. We don't get a great deal of complaints with motels, but we get we get a few. There's some things that are more serious. Uh, if we consider it's a possibility that it's an imminent public health hazard, then we would treat that differently than we would something uh, that we may just give them some time to correct. It just, again, it kind of depends on the nature of the complaint, and they're all different. So, you know, we never know what we're going to find until we actually get out there. We're required through our regulations to give a, an amount of time, a reasonable amount of time to correct the problem. So, you know, we, it could be something that we give 24 hours, it could be something four days, seven days, 30 days, and it could be immediate. Motels, nah, it's, it, it's really hard for a motel to be actually issued a notice to cease operation. It'd have to be something very, very, very serious. You know, say for instance, we get a complaint, it's a bed bug, and, and bed bugs are a problem throughout the United States. And, and we see our share of bed bugs. Uh, we, we would do in that situation, the room that the bed bugs may be present in could not be rented, uh, could not be occupied until the problem's taken care of. So we wouldn't necessarily close the entire issue, an entire notice to cease operation to the motel, but it would affect that one individual room and also possibility the rooms on either side or above or below it. Arvin showed us one particular complaint that was mentioned in a previous piece of the series regarding straight piping from a particular motel. He said that the complaint was rectified by the owner in a timely manner and that it was a wastewater, not sewage issue coming from the business. According to Arvin, from the health department's perspective, it would be incredibly difficult to cease operation on a motel or hotel. To get the city's code enforcement angle on the story, we spoke to Philip Williams, Director of Codes, Safety and Risk Management. He responded saying, quote, We are not currently in a position to entirely condemn any of the motels in question for ordinance violations or building code deficiencies. He also said, I do believe a review of the existing nuisance ordinance should be conducted in an effort to determine the feasibility of specifically addressing establishments that cause undue hardship on our first responders and our citizens as a result of excessive criminal activity, establishing a criteria that defines when and how these establishments are deemed a public nuisance would create an avenue for the Department of Building Inspections and Code Enforcement to issue citations and penalties directly to the proprietor under the nuisance ordinance instead of being limited to building and life safety codes alone, end quote. Williams also responded saying that they do not have any ongoing code or ordinance investigations for any of the motels and hotels at the moment. He did mention that some past issues were that certain portions of exterior stairwells were condemned for structural deficiencies. They also temporarily condemned specific rooms due to methamphetamine production and required plumbing drains to be rerouted, repaired, and connected to the sewer line to stop infiltration into the stormwater system. Therefore, from the code's perspective and health department, it seems entirely hard to shut these places down in order to try to curb criminal activity, so a new ordinance that attacks it from the criminal side might be necessary if these hotels were to be shut down. For WBON-TV, I'm Marissa Hempel.